Okay, let's look at a few other bits and bobs to do with these regions. Um, I'll drag one of the Amen Brother chunks onto the track. So I've dragged a, a region that was previously created. It lives here in my project media. The region simply represents that section of the file on the disk. I can drag the region onto a track. Right? Now I can do that multiple times. I'll drag another one of the same region onto the track. And another one, the same region. And another one, the same region. So at these points here, 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 and here, Logic will play back that region on the disk, which represents that section of the file. So it will play that part of the file at these four points. But each of these were dragged onto the track from the project media here. These four regions are the same region in the project media. So if I, once they're on the track, if I adjust the length of one of them, it adjusts the length of all of them. Right? So that can be useful, bear that in mind. If you drag regions out of your project media and repeatedly drop them onto the track, if you, they're, they're just copies of the same region in the project media. So if you adjust one, it adjusts them all because you're adjusting the same one that's just been dropped that many times onto the track. All right? Let's get rid of those. But if I have the region on the track, there it is in the project media, and I drag copies off on the track, Alt and drag off a copy, a new copy of the region is created in my project media, which is independent. And another one, Alt copy. And another one. These are all independent copies of the same region, the same reference to play the same section of the file. Now I can adjust any of them and it doesn't affect the others. So there's two ways of working like that with um, these regions. And it may be useful. Let's get rid of those three from, from the project media here and they'll be deleted from the track. Uh, oops, sorry, from here. Come on. So it may be useful from time to time to drag copies of the same region onto the track to play the same bit of an audio file at different positions, repeating again and again. And they're all copies of the same region, which means if you tweak and adjust one, it tweaks and adjusts all of them at every point that region plays. That can be useful. Right? But otherwise, if you want independent copies, Alt and drag copies off on the track itself. Then you'll get an independent copy made each time, which is its own copy and can be independently tweaked to change the section of the file that that region is, is playing. Okay. Let's delete them from here. All right, so that's one thing. Okay, and now another thing. Um, here's the track here. Let's retitle it Audio 1. Ah, uh, sign it to my mic input. Okay, now I'm going to record on this track. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I'm recording, the region that's being created is red. I hit stop, and it becomes blue. You probably notice this every time. The default color for regions on audio tracks is blue. There's the recording in my project media. There's the region. That can be changed. Let's delete it. Delete the file from the disk. We can color the tracks, and then recordings made on the tracks take on the same color as the tracks. To color the tracks, we need to bring up the track shortcut menu. We do that by right-clicking anywhere on the empty gray background of any track. But if, like me, right-click is assigned to your toolbox, then you control left-click on the grey background area of any track. Bring up the shortcut menu for the tracks. Track header components. Show track colour bars, which will make this numbered bar at the side of the track take on a colour. Show track colour bars. Boom. And it's blue because all audio tracks have the default colour blue. But now that colour bars are showing, I can colour this track any colour I like. Just select the track, Alt-C to bring up the colour box. I can colour the track any colour I like. Okay, so I'm going to colour it this green colour. And now when I record on the track... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still red while I record, but I hit stop. 
and it takes on the colour of the track green. There's the newly created file and its region in my project media. So you might want to do this. This can be quite useful, right? Because you might want, you know, all your guitars to be green, all your vocals to be red, all your backing vocals to be yellow or whatever, right? But once you've activated colour bars, then every track you create from then on has a colour bar. So it's easy to change the colour. All audio tracks will always be blue, unless you duplicate an audio track, right? Which has got a different colour. Um, so let's colour this track a different colour. Uh, so that regions recorded on it take on a different colour. Now, when you're colouring the track, any regions in the project area here, the, the arrange area, must be deselected. Otherwise, you'll colour the highlighted regions. So select the track, and then if any regions on that track are highlighted or anywhere else, just click on the background somewhere to make sure no regions are highlighted. Then Alt-C, bring up the colour box, colour the track. I'll colour it um, purple this time. And now when I record on this track, let's assign it an input. When I record on this track, the resulting recording will be purple. Yeah, 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 yeah. La, 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 la. And stop. And it becomes purple the same colour as the track. Right, so colouring your tracks may be useful because then your recordings, your regions on each track and in the project media, uh, will take on the colour of the track, which can make it easy for you to identify quickly uh, which regions are what type of content in your in your project, right? So I'll select that region, that track, and uh, that, that recording, rather, and its region in the project media, backspace to delete, delete it off the disk. Same with that one. Select the file, backspace, delete it from the disk, and then delete that track. Okay, that's that. Now, are there any other bits and bobs? Let me have a quick think. Nah, that'll do for now. If there's other bits, we'll 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 encounter them as we go on with this tutorial series. Okay, so there's your basic stuff to do with regions and everything, right? And now we can get into doing some actual recording. <laughs>